Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Country Conversations with DVD. Baby, we're going to do two recaps in this late late hour. I'm not going to make it to um, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I will definitely have that first on my agenda tomorrow. Then we're going to talk about um, Miss Dr. Jackie and her apology and what I think of the apology. Now, let's get into a oh, how you doing? Yeah, you know, uh, Mother Wendy. And um, this is uh, Basketball Wives LA. Then we're going to get right into Basketball Wives Atlanta. It wasn't a lot going on on the episode of Basketball Wives LA. I am glad that it's over. Uh, I should have listened, as my grandma used to say, I should have listened to my first night when I said, do not recap this show. But However, again, I'm recapping it because I was recapping Orlando. Now, the name of the episode, oh, it's season 11, episode 11, name of the episode is Shop Till You Drop. Episode opens up with Jennifer, her son figure, and her mother sister. And mother sister is, um, they feel her in on what happened with Vanessa and, uh, as a mom, I just wouldn't have felt 100% comfortable sitting there looking at somebody, looking as old as I am, <laughs> and, uh, you know, trying to get serious with my son. Like I said, now, if Jennifer wanted to use that young Tilda thing as a play thing, different story, but it looks like she is trying to get serious with him. Foolishness. So. Mom said, keep on, you're going to run up and you're going to get done. Up. And mom seems to be about it, about it. And even though Christian admits that Jennifer had already confronted Vanessa, he got to do his own thing. Him and that raspy voice. By him being in the prison and all that good stuff. You know, that's how he talk. Sort of like nail. <laughs> In the next scene, Evelyn is getting prepared for her pop-up shop. So she sends all the girls invitations to her um, pop-up shop event. And she sends them different, uh, I guess, skin-tight athletic wear that she's selling. And she wants them to wear this to the event. Nothing much here. Moving right along. In Confessions... Evelyn's other daughter, Jennifer, is excited for her and she's ready for her to be successful with her little athletic wear or whatever it is. You know, to be quite honest with you, I'm watching it on TV, so I'm not sure, but the stuff don't look cute. Looks like Giselle and Ashley's mess, to be honest with you. So then we get into dis disillusioned Brittany. I'm going to start calling Brittany Disillusion Brittany. Now, all this time I have been on Brittany's side, but this particular episode right here makes me see that she was somewhat of a little buzzkill. It's like she never really, you know, I, I'm glad she gave the pushback to the OGs, yes. But it seemed like she just had this, like, negative energy even when, you know, she could have been, you know, a little bit more upbeat and positive with Jaseel. She works out and she works on staying off. And this is foreshadowing. I think she's just like really frustrated and over it. And, you know, a lot of people get to this point on this show. This show right here. In the next scene, we have Brooke. And it seems like Brooke just can't leave it alone. She keeps circling the block. Then she's confused about circling the block. Then old boy sent her lots and lots of roses. And she's at the point where she does not want to be confused. She don't want to confuse him. She don't want to have herself confused. So right now she's in a conundrum because she is wondering that maybe they're just trauma bonding at this point. So, yeah, probably so. And you did violate your marriage. And... I do still see love there, so maybe you should give him another shot and explore it. I don't ever tell people what to do in their marriages. That's not my thing about 
<laughs> was not what my show was about, Country Conversations with DVD. I just know what I would do. I just remember the things that led me to be the way that I am. It was actually a misogynist by the name of Michael Bayston. And, you know, he was like, well, women allow us to cheat. And, uh, you know, just by me watching the episode Love and Marriage Hospital with that interview will also be up tomorrow. I just say men can't take what they dish, period. Think he'll be circling the block back if Brooke was the one who was she? I don't think so. Those red roses would have been in somebody's el- somebody else's house. In the next scene, you have LaVon and the event coordinator. LaVon is having this whole takeover spirit. He tells uh, the event planner that Evelyn is his fiance. And then when Evelyn comes, the uh, event planner is like, oh, I'm so congratulations. And uh, Evelyn takes her little neck back like, huh? Like, we broke up. But apparently in this particular scene, LaVon does not know they're broke up yet. She told her about how they met on the dating show, and she's acting all surprised, which uh, I doubt she didn't know that. But, um, yeah. I, I'm not, see, like I said, I didn't finish Queen's Court, so I don't know if they had chemistry on the show or not. I'm not going to go back and watch it, I don't think. But, hey, drop down in the comments and let me know, did they ever have any chemistry? But, period, I'm over this show. <laughs> so, move it right along. And the next thing, we have Jackie, and she's at the gym, and she, has, she says she's more dedicated to working out than she's ever been. Um... No more words from Takara. I don't know. Maybe she gave her some money, but we haven't heard anything from her since Evelyn read her book, I don't think. But now she, I mean, if you watched this show and you never watched it before, you would think that Jackie only had kids with Doug. And you know, to me still, that is really sad. I know that uh, she and Takara had a bad um, relationship, but it's just, it's, Almost disgusting to watch to see her fawning over um, Shandy. Now Shandy is getting married. She's <clears throat> and she's following in her mom's footsteps. She's about to become a basketball wife. Wife, nothing else to see here. Oh, and by the way, Shandy did not tell her mom, and she didn't tell her mom that she was engaged until this moment. And she does. She didn't. One of the reasons why she didn't tell because Jack is so controlled. She hovers over those kids with uh, Doug, like you know, that they're the best thing since sliced bread. And the kids are kind of resistant to it. They know he probably have another sibling, and that other sibling is not being, especially Shannon. And Shannon's like, you know, I really don't want this whole big monstrosity of a wedding that you're trying to plan with all these parrot looking colors that she's thinking of. Oh, Jackie. So Jackie, Joe Camel, aka Jennifer, and uh Evelyn meet and they're meeting at Evelyn's house and Evelyn they're talking about their man problem. Evelyn is kind of like letting them know how she was you know, indifferent towards Levon and uh, Jeff was like, you know, you know, get at me in a few shot. And then Evelyn is like, I think I'm leaning towards, you know, maybe just not being able to work. Then uh, Jackie, um, they talk about Brittany and how Brittany is just being aloof and she's not really into being in the group. And then Evelyn is like, I really, really tried to integrate her into the group and I give Evelyn that now Evelyn is a mess I cannot stand her it's nothing ever 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 that she can ever do to make me like her uh yeah you know you shouldn't hold people's past against them but she's done quite too much in my opinion um she's a colorist and I said what I said so uh I wouldn't have liked her but she did try with Brittany I do give her that Jennifer uh, tells, so 
here's Jackie inviting them to her daughter's wedding. Bitch, how you know uh, Shannon want them hoes in her way? <laughs> then, you know, Jennifer lets her know. She's like, you plan 30 million weddings. Um, you know, let her plan her own wedding. And that, I agree with Jennifer. And I don't ever agree with Joe Camel on anything. So this man is really breaking Brooke down. Ooh, she's getting into it, baby. He takes on a magical gondola ride and they're floating around in in the harbor there. And ay, 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 ay. And she's reminiscing and he's telling her they love each other. And she says she's getting a clearer picture on where they need to go in this relationship. You're going to take that man back because you know you want him, girl. Shanley calls um, Jackie and she tells Jackie, uh, stay out of it. Let me plan my own wedding. I want to do my own thing. I don't want a small, intimate. Can you believe I'm a basketball wife? I mean, girl, yeah, we can believe it. And so moving right along to the next scene, we go to the pop up shop, and there is Evelyn acting as if um, LaVon is. Not her man, and she's almost looking disgusted by him. And everybody is trying to put them together. And she's got this fake ass grin on her face that you can really see is fake. And um, and he's, I mean, he's feeling her vibe. And if I were him, I would just got my little stuff on like myself, uh, foreshadowing. And dipped on out the little functioning door. I would have. Period. Jennifer lets Jackie and um, Evelyn know that she's going to do a movie. And she wants them to be in it. Girl, stop. And you know them things can't end. Well, Jackie's all right. But that other one, no ma'am. She just acts like a whore. And... That is easy to do because that is who she is, in my opinion. Uh oh. Oh, you about to bring the thug nigga out of Chris. He sees Vanessa. We don't know nobody asked for him. That's what's up with the watch time. That good. Um, uh, love and marriage, huh, sweet? Okay. Because he's ready. He's sitting on ready. Vanessa feels his energy, and here we go. Man, I'm telling you, this girl is about to be attacked from a mad, ravaging dog. If she were a man, and I don't think her not being a man has anything to do with it. I believe if they weren't on film, that man would have probably boxed her upside her head because she is interfering in his game, in my opinion. Now, uh, Evelyn, of course, reverses it on. Vanessa and Confessions say, well, she does have a tendency to be messy. So do you. Tell me. First of all, whatever goes on in my, in, in, in my household is between me and Jennifer. Clear. And she's like, well, you know, I was just trying to, you know, be vigilant on what was going on with you guys. It wasn't your business, Vanessa. However... Like he said, Jennifer had already given her the 411. Talking about, yeah, I had a kid, and that kid was um, with me before. You know, I had you when I turned 17. I'm still trying to build a relationship with that child. And I went to jail. Whatever Jennifer knows about me, whatever I did, Jennifer already knows. Trust me. So Vanessa tries to put this off as if it was. Her looking at her, her about the scam situation. Yeah, you've been a little nosy, getting a little messy too. But, you know, he was like, the way he was, you know, approached the whole situation, I could see that, you know, Vanessa was, you know, kind of really taken aback. And I would have been too. And all everybody's in the background, like, ooh, ooh, ooh look, at, look at Mr. Man attacking this woman. Yeah. In a way, he kind of did. That man said he's a best-selling author. Yes. And Paul Levine, he gets on the mic, and he's happy and proud of his little fiance. And um, he has her flowers, and 
She is acting so unbothered, so untouched. Didn't want to be touched, <laughs> as a matter of fact. That lady wanted diamonds. Because <laughs> everybody was like, oh, flowers. Mm -mm. No, he didn't just give you flowers. You are Emma Lazar. Chad back. Who is Emma? <laughs> Ooh, baby. Ooh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad this season's about over. Ooh, uh, Shani, you might just want to stop bringing your girl back. You know, nobody is excited over her return to the show anymore. I'm just saying. You should have, when you went fresh, should have started with Jaseel, Clayana, uh, and Brittany. Left it at that. One OG, Jackie. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> now, Jaseel and uh, Brittany meet, and Brittany's over it. She lets her know that she never really felt like she was part of the group. So she's out. And Jaseel is just sitting there with her remote. Like, what the hell? This bitch didn't just walk out. To just Britain took off a mic pack and chalked them up, baby. Never to be seen again. Shelly is speaking with her mom yet again about the man. She's about to become a basketball wife for. And Jackie is... A little bit taken aback because he didn't ask her and Doug for his hand. Doug did admit that he felt some kind of way about that because this is baby, you know, that's his baby. But at the same time, you still have Jackie interrupting and butting in. Let that lady be grown. I believe she's in her 30s. She is good. Stop. She got it. It's a hard no for Jackie throwing the win, and I agree with her. Jackie's over the top. Nobody wants that mess. And uh, she's like, Mom, I got it. I got it. Okay? And then Jackie lets her know that she is happy that he put a ring on her finger, and she respects him for that. Evelyn is ready to find peace. She calls Shawnee, and Shawnee says, Oh, it's time for a get together. She knows she wants to be on camera. She misses the summer. She misses the mess. Good Reverend Miss Shawnee. She misses the mess. And I wonder, does her husband know just how miss it is here for ease? Because she goes and says, Well, I'm only inviting the core six or whatever. I'm so tired of the word core. I don't know what to do. I see a core six. Well, we had a core six over there on Love Marriage Hustle. Then we had a core four on Marriage, marriage Matters. Now she's on the core, you know, let's see, that's core four, two, Jennifer, Evelyn, Jacqueline, and, yep, well, the core three are on this show. Child back. Well, I guess the core four, because that would include Shawnee, too. And uh, Evelyn's talking about, I need to have a talk with your hoods. Why? Girl, you don't want the man. I can say this. Giselle really tried with um, Brittany. Um, the show ends with the two of them. And Giselle is saying that she really, you know, really wanted her to work. And she does understand that, you know, things didn't work out because Brittany felt like she never fit in. But at the same time, you know, she did things well. Now, at this point, People in the audience are seeing that you see her might have been the ultimate flip flopper. In some episodes, I did see that see it that way. I saw it in Britney's eyes, but then once this whole scene wrapped up and it happened the way it did, I did see Giselle as really trying to be the mediator. However, that did not work out. We'll see how things shake out at the reunion. I don't even think Britney is coming to the reunion, but Clay on it. Um, I'll give this episode, I'm going to rate this episode because I'm so, uh, disillusioned in this show, not the season, but the show. I'm going to rate this episode and give it a two out of five stars. It's whack all the way. Uh, you know, you can ride with you see That's my girl. That's my Mississippi girl. Other than that, whack all day long. 
Um, I think this next episode is the season finale. Hallelujah. Okay. And that is the end of this recap. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, for Country Conversations and Commercial Free Entertainment. This is Country Conversations with Diva D. As I do when I close, I'm going to talk about deuces. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Not deuces. Let's go into Basketball Wife Orlando. So, yeah. Now that I see the previews coming up, I see you know. <laughs> young man, young man is about to propose to Jennifer. Blech. Okay, back to the episode. Season 1, episode 11. We're going to get right into Basketball Wives Atlanta. Even though this episode was 100% better than um, Basketball Wives, um, I don't have a lot of notes on it because of the simple fact that this is leading up into more things. Is they're going on a trip, and Megan is so excited about her little promotional trip, and she divides the group up on the Sprinter van on, you know, how she wanted to go, the fun girls and the boring girls. And, of course, Ashley has on one of her hats where she's being messy. Okay. So, I'm going to get it popping. Ashley says that she is wondering where the brothel thing come is come from because you know Danielle sets up dinner before they go before they go, and um, she only invites you know her select free <laughs> again. So you know Ashley's like, "Where's the brothel thing coming up from?" And then she says, "Well, we got it from Milan. Here we go." Ashley in confession says, "Um, you know." Me and Milan ain't that cool anyway, so. Excuse me, I'll let her slide. Danielle told Ashley um, that, you know, she wants Kenzie to back up off her because her running her mouth is causing issues with her custody here. Um, I watched Danielle in her interview with Color Me Pink. I will say that she came across more relatable. I guess it didn't read well on the show because she got all my everlasting nerves on the show. <laughs> I put it that way. Because she seemed to be trying to be mean girl. And then when her mean girl co-captain bailed on her, it seemed like she almost was on an island by herself. Um, Ashley attempted to confront Milan on the bus and uh, she says, um, she wants to know why she, you know, made that statement about her being in a brothel. And then, of course, Milan, some kind of way. She always seems to wiggle her way out of things. Her and that floppy booty of hers. It's weird. And then some kind of way she gets away with it. Um, then Kenzie says, oh, she big and bold. I'm tired of Danny. She got to go. Child back. You ain't gonna do nothing. You ain't gonna fight flies off your ass. Then here we go. Ashley asked Megan, uh, was Milan when they get to the uh venue, they go out to dinner. And then as soon as as soon as they get there, we supposed to be having a peaceful dinner, according to Megan. She wants to get the mess started and she's being funny and ask um Megan was Milan black enough to have a break. And Milan's like, yeah, and what? Megan asks Ashley, you good? <laughs> Trying to throw slit shade. Yeah, she was. Ashley says that Megan is a posture and she's messy in confession, not to her face. Megan told her, well, you know, we're, we'll are we we'll never be friends. I mean, we can be cordial. I mean, Megan is about that life. She was like, and next what? So Mulan and Danny are up next. And Mulan told Danny, um, you're just mad because I didn't accept your apology. You hit me, bitch. And then Danny says, I hit you because you hit Morgan. Morgan uh, says, well, you did hit me. Mulan says, no, I was trying to break up the fight. <sighs> she, I think she will. You know, 
it was a mush involved. Some people could say it was a slick little lick, but for what? I mean, well, I guess people could say she's taken up for um, me, but it didn't read that way to me. Anyway, um, then Milan tells um, Danny, well, you know, you didn't, uh, you were talking out that miss when you was talking about more. Uh oh. Ooh-wee. And she's like, what did she say, you know? And she said, well, she says you were a fake friend. <laughs> and you, when the men are watching you, you're a party poop. And then Morgan looks her straight in her face and says, did you say that? Danny says, no, I didn't. And uh, Danny says, Milan is lying. And Morgan says, she don't know who to believe because, you know, her and Milan have become cool. But not cooler than you and Danny, though, right, mean girls? Okay. Mm-hmm. They about to break up you mean girls, it looks like. So Morgan goes back to the room, and she decides she wants to confide in Lindsay. <sighs> I'm trying to be nice about Lindsay because she's pregnant, but that it's like she does not want Morgan and Danny to get friends or friendly because she won't have her baby daddy part too. And I see it what I see. Anyway, Ashley and Ken's go to the pool and they talk about how messy Megan is. Megan is messy. But, you know, she is the pot store stirrer of this show. The show's supposed to be centered around her. It was supposed to be centered around her it got away from that a little bit because people were you know gravitating towards morgan and then morgan has done a 180 and turned the fans off i mean oh for me for me for me she was like starting off as my favorite and now ooh, morgan so morgan walks up on nick and Mulan talking at the beach and morgan says um you know, I think Danny is lying. They say, well, what gives you the impression that she's lying? And she said, well, I talked to other people at the party, and they said that Danielle was indeed saying these things about me. And, um, you know, that pretty much wraps things up within the episode. It was confirmed that she said it in Morgan's mind, and Morgan is very disappointed and upset about the whole thing. Now, my opinion on the whole thing is that Danny did say it. I think she said it like I would say about my best friend. The thing about Danny that kind of made it seem like she was lying is she backed up off it. Now, when you are best friends, you can say what you said and stand on. And that's what me and my best friend I always promise we do. Now, you know, I almost came to blows about some stuff, you know, because I just simply said she looked like her brother one time. I guess she didn't want to look like her brother. But anyway, one of her other friends went back and told her, I said, she looked like her brother. I said, hell, that's your brother. What's wrong with looking like your brother? Anyway, she going to try to confront me and ask me, did I say it? I said, yeah, I said, and what? Still friends to this day. And I just think if Danny says something in that general category, which I think she did, then they could have come to a resolution on it. That's why I see it. Now, even though this um, recap was much shorter than the one for Basketball Wives LA, trust me, it's not because it wasn't as good. It's just that. It was so much better that it was able to tie up some loose ends that was there and to, you know, move right into the flow of things. Sometimes when you're doing these recaps and the show is bad, you can get a shorter review out of worse shows sometimes. And then sometimes you can't because sometimes you're trying to commentate on stuff that is not really that interesting if that makes sense but anyway basketball wise Lando was good too 
And we're going to close with that. Yeah, for real this time. <laughs> and uh, as I do when I close, I'm going to say deuces. This is Country Conversations with Diva D. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, even if I only get, mm, I only have 107 followers. So say, for example, only 50 people watch this video. I should have 50 likes. Come on, people. Come on. Give me the like. <laughs> all you're doing is just kicking that little thumbs up button or a thumbs down button either way it goes it moves me up all right thank you for watching goodbye deuces